In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of developmental psychology, or child psychology, by learning about the different types of attachments that children can have with their caregivers and how we measure those attachments from a psychological perspective. Let's start at the very basic level here by just defining what we mean by an attachment. An attachment is a long-standing connection or bond with another. And importantly, infants differ in both the quality and the type of attachment that they have with their caregivers. And as you saw on the first slide, the way we typically measure in psychology the type of attachment that children have with their caregivers is through the strange situation test. So as before, I'm simply going to walk you through the structure of the test to give you an idea of how it works. It's a very simple test. It's not complicated at all. You can do this on your own, but there are several phases to it that are important to make note of. So I'll mention that this is typically done in a lab, uh, so a laboratory in a university setting, but it doesn't have to be. You can do this in any strange environment, so an environment that the child is not familiar with. All right, so to start, mom brings the baby into a room. I'll pause for a second note here to mention that this doesn't have to be mom. It can be dad. It can be any sort of caregiver. It's basically just to test the relationship between two people. But just to make it simple, I'm just going to use uh, the word mom here. So the mom brings baby into a novel environment. Once the baby settles down to play, a stranger enters the room. The stranger attempts to play with the baby. Get them a little more comfortable with the environment. And mom gets a cue to leave the room, leaving the baby alone with the stranger. And here's the key first part, so sort of the key component of phase one of the strange situation test. Mom re-enters the room after a few minutes, and we record how the baby reacts. Again, this is the first point that we're going to use this information to see what's the attachment like between mom and baby. How does the baby record to mom leaving and coming back? And phase two be uh, begins here. So the stranger leaves the room, and we wait until the baby is calm. Then mom gets a cue to leave the baby alone. Okay, this is the key part of phase two. The stranger returns and tries to console the baby. You know, tries to play with it. Typically, you know, this is distressing for children, so they might be crying, but, you know, it's not cruel to children. This is the sort of thing they encounter on a daily basis, this level of distress. So the stranger returns, tries to console the baby, and then mom returns. And we again record how the baby reacts. This is the second key measurement. And based on those two key measurements of mom returning after, uh, in the first place, leaving the child alone with a stranger, and then in the second phase, uh, leaving the child alone altogether, we record those two reactions and we use that to assess based on the behavior the child displayed what type of attachment the child has to the parent and let me break down the four types of attachments that children can have with their parents or caregivers the first is called the secure attachment and this is what you want thankfully it is the most common it's in about 60% of infants in the United States this is just where we have the data um, we don't really have a lot of data on the type of attachment styles from outside the United States so this is what we have to work with but it's the most common uh, in the strange situation test we see that the baby prefers the parent over the stranger and the parent importantly acts as a secure base sort of a key term here so the parent gives off this uh, sense of safety to the child. This is what we mean by a secure base. So the child will go in the room, they'll kind of explore a little bit, they'll, they'll play with some of the toys that are out there, but if the stranger enters or if anything else is scary, if there's a toy they're intimidated by, boom, they run straight back to mom, right? Straight back to the secure base. And when that secure base leaves the room, when mom is instructed to leave, the baby does become upset. That's perfectly normal, right? If something is a sense of security for you in a strange environment, well, if that sense of security leaves, you might become upset. That's just a natural reaction. But the key here, when it comes to, you know, why we're talking about a secure attachment, is that when the parent returns, what we see is relief and comfort. The baby might be crying and screaming when mom leaves, but if they have a secure attachment to mom, the second mom returns, they stop crying, they feel better, they feel relieved, they feel safe once again. That's a secure attachment. Now let's get on to the insecure attachments. The first is called insecure avoidant, or sometimes just avoidant. And you'll see why in a moment. 
This is less common than the secure attachment, but still relatively common. It's about 15 to 20 percent of infants in the United States. And here's the type of behavior we see on the strange situation test, avoidant behavior. The child generally is unresponsive to the parent. The parent here isn't a secure base. The parent might leave. The parent might come back. The child seems indifferent either way. When the parent comes back, even after being, even after the child has been alone with the stranger, uh, the child is really slow to show a positive reaction to the parent. Again, it's just simply avoiding the parent. It's sort of an indifference to the parent. Next, we have the insecure anxious attachment, which is sometimes simply called a resistant attachment. And again, you'll really see why in a moment. It's about as common as the previous insecure attachment, the avoidant attachment, 15, uh, 15 to 20% of infants in the United States. And here's the behavior. It's really interesting. The children tends to show clingy behavior at first, but then rejects the parents' attempts to interact with them. So, in the one sense, they're really fearful. They're really clingy. So, you know, they are they realize that the parent kind of is a source of safety, um, although the parent doesn't necessarily act as a secure base per se. But then when mom tries to play with the child, they're uninterested, right? Generally, these types of children are uh, too fearful to explore the room. They're really anxious about this strange situation. When mom leaves the room or whoever leaves the room, they become very angry and despondent uh, at that fact. And even when mom returns, right, or the caregiver returns, they don't stop crying. They're still just very difficult to console, very difficult to comfort. They're very unhappy and miserable at the situation that they're in. Again, it's marked by a lot of anxiety, and they're just really resistant to their parent or caregiver's attempts to console them. This is the insecure, anxious attachment. All right, last but not least, we have the disorganized attachment. This is the rarest, and uh, for good reason, as you'll see in a moment. This is um, the sort of attachment that about 5 to 10% of infants in the United States have with their caregivers. And the behavior we see in the strange situation test is disorganized. The child really behaves oddly. They might freeze, they might run around the room erratically, or they might run away from the parent when the parent returns. And sadly, the reason we see this type of behavior is because it reflects an inability to regulate emotions. It's often the result of um, sometimes poor parenting, but most often abusive parenting. Now, in our next video, we'll talk about parenting styles. So keep all of this in mind and think about the connection between the style of parenting you have toward your child and the type of attachment your child has toward you.